Cool. All right. All right. Is the stream started? Yep. All right. Let's do this. Um, All it's, right. It's the four of us so far. Watts is in the background. He's there. He's... Yeah, he's a uh, he's he's lurking silently. Um. So, uh, I think the easiest way to start is to wind the clock back. Gosh, about thirty seconds from where we actually ended. Uh, and cover what happened. Um, while you were all setting things up for your opening night and uh, your various speakers had uh, had started to speak, um, you came, you know, to the moment where you were uh, you were about to see what uh, what your target had to say with his own speech. Uh, when an explosion shook the compound uh, from outside. Um, for those of you who were downstairs through the windows, um, which have shattered, you would have seen uh, a large fireball from basically across your courtyard and into the street. Um, it splashed the sides of the nearby buildings on the other side of the street in fire, uh, sent people flying. Uh, and in fact, there are uh, charred bodies in the street. Um, the street itself was chaos. Everybody who was uh, everybody who was around, even those, you know, even your own patrons, um, have basically taken to screaming, fleeing, trying to help the wounded, um, put out any small fires, though it looks like the major conflagration has passed already. Um, there's nothing, nothing's in danger of being burned down. Um, as you can imagine, uh, your own upstairs establishment is also emptying relatively quickly. Um, you, uh, I believe, had decided that uh, you were going to help certain, you know, you were going to help yeah. them exit the building safely, and then you were going to investigate the scene. Um, Karoma, you had taken to the rooftops, right? Um, it sounds about right. Uh, also, I think Smoke Ad as well. Um, and I think it was both of you yeah. that noticed a shadowy figure uh, on the rooftop above the building across the street from you, uh, sort of like uh, disappear uh, off the back edge of the roof. Um, on the north yeah. side of the building. Um, not like magically or anything, but like just like they fell out of your sight line. They were obviously leaving. You never did get a good look at who they were, but you do know right. generally what direction they went. Gotcha. Uh, and that is the scene. All right. Uh, who's with me up there? Uh, Watts, Smoke smoke we can't let him get away and i uh i'm gonna i gotta pull up my character sheet let's see i'm gonna how fast is smoke uh, I think you and Smoke are actually of relatively equal speed. All right. Uh, yeah. I'm going to touch Smoke and cast Lawn Strider. Don't let him get away. Right on. Um, and I'm. Is that a main action? Uh, I, I think so. It's not a cantrip, so yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want to click it so we can uh, we can see what it does? Absolutely. That's nope. a That's... sanctuary. Yep. <laughs> there we go. Oh, perfect. Cool. That's a hell of a useful spell, man. I wish my my fucking paladin had somebody with access to that spell nearby. <laughs> right. I don't let uh, him get away. He's a slow ass motherfucker, so. Oh, it's duration one hour, not concentration. Well, it's a level one. Yeah. I can get the scroll pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, not a problem. We'll talk about that on a Friday. And uh, I'll end my... I mean, that's it. 
that's all I'm doing. All right. Um, so if you guys don't have the map yourself up, um, it's Troll Skull Alley Players, I think is what it's called. Um, you should be able to click on the maps button uh, and find it in there. I have like a ton of windows open. Just a second. Yeah. So I'll turn my voice mod on and off based on whether or not it's Chroma talking. <laughs> nice. It's pretty fun, right? Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Sadly, it crashes on me all the time, but I actually really like that program. Why is it fun? You said Troll Skull Alley Man. No, no, no. Not Troll Man or Manor Troll Skull Alley. alley. Trust Call Alley. Okay. Trust Call Alley player. Player. God. I. Wow. Six pages. Also. Use the uncategorized tab. Okay. Ooh. Thank you. Troll Skull Alley players. I don't know what you mean when you're talking about speeches and speakers. Might be a bit behind, but that's okay. Uh, on the opening night, um, well, one of the things that you guys oh, had done what? is you, of, of your tavern. Uh, oh, you, you had set up uh, the upstairs. Um, that's sort of that room on the north side that's connected to the the tower at, that's there. You had set it up as a speakers hall, and you had booked a bunch of speakers, um, partly to lure in. Um, oh God, what's his name? Floon. Um, Maloon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he even got to give his speech. Right. Uh, and he was the last speaker, in fact, right? Uh, he got to give his full speech, but I managed to shut him down. Then the uh, psychic came and spoke for a moment and said about um, uh, something about, I think it was staying vigilant or something, about being aware about things. I can't remember what it was. Um Careful of men on roofs, men or women <laughs> on roofs. <laughs> and I think it was when the next speaker was starting to set up that it happened, or it was like right after her or something. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, I knew it was between speakers. Um, yeah. Uh, to recap, by the way, uh, what she told you is that she she couldn't uh, explicitly confirm the nature of uh, of that dude's. Um, what's the best way to put it? Circumstance. Mm. Um, but it was very clear that there was, uh, if not a Gaius, then, then some other um, influence to his will. And so she was going to try to expose him. Uh, and then the fireball happened. What's, uh, what's, what's uh, Batgirl's name again? I mean, I should say Dragon Girl, but Batgirl close enough. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, Zelly. Yep. Zelly. Zelly. Where is Zelly? Uh, she was downstairs um, gotcha. with uh, with your uh, your elf orphan uh, uh, concierge. Right. <laughs> Robin. <laughs> <laughs> right. Your ward, uh, as it were. <laughs> right. And Karoma with that lawn strider on me. Do you want me to foot her over to the roof of the guy? Had, yeah, I want us. I want you to chase after the guy who's running. That person who's running is over to the east, and Karoma and Smoking were the circle to the west. Yeah, we can. Oh yeah, him. hold on. Let we me. Still um, saw him though. Right. So these circles here are actually from an older time that we used this map. So let me get rid of these because these are not useful. Okay. Yeah, I was looking. It's like I, I feel like these were for something that had happened before. Cool. There we go. Thank you. Can All right, you, now uh, let me uh, let me put yeah. down some new pointers for Thank where you. things are. Much appreciated. Have any of you guys have while well, you're doing this? Have any of you guys had a uh, monkey shoulder whiskey? Pretty good. Never heard of it. Where is it? Yeah, from? me either. Maybe it's an Illinois thing. Let me check the bottle because I am. Monkey shoulder. Uh, 
All right. So the large circle, uh, sort of like at the intersection of the street. Uh, oh, in fact, let me uh, shift it slightly further north. Or is he still away? Oh, I was just going to point out where things are. We weren't going to do anything. Gotcha. It's from Scotland. Oh. Distilled and matured and bottled in Scotland by William Grant and Sons. Monkey Shoulder, the original blended malt scotch whiskey. Oh. Huh. Yeah. It's very good. Oh, cool. Office nice. center is the bottle. Okay. Uh, so I removed the pointers and placed in some new ones. The large circle is basically where the explosion happened. Uh, the square in the corner of that roof is where you lost sight of the dude. He was generally heading in a sort of like north, northwest direction. Um, I apologize. I think I said east earlier. That was just bad orienteering on my part. Um, let's see. Uh, from the north eastern side of your building sort of across from the the tower at uh is where you guys can exit from the second floor uh and basically where the party token the p there is um is basically generally where the exit to your tavern is um it's technically i think like one square south but i don't want to drag shit more around okay the large circle the large circle is where the explosion was, right? Yeah. Can you mark on the map where Watts and I are and where this guy is trying to... Where this guy is as we're chasing him? Oh, uh, yeah. One second. Thank you. Yeah. So what's at the corner? What is that other one? That small green square? There was a person that... Um, Watts... Uh, That's where they saw the person. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right, there's a token for smoke. <laughs> Slightly not to scale, but there is a token for chroma. Um, yep. Uh, if you guys are up on the roof, um, actually, you probably would not have run right through the bodies and the people, so you're probably slightly more north than that. So you're probably more like that. Uh, in theory, since those are your tokens, you should be able to move them around as you want. Um, okay. So, um, Smoke, you are uh, attempting to make your way across the rooftops. Um, with that 14, you might stumble a few times here and there, but you're generally... Um, you generally manage to make it uh, without incident. Um, you keep sight of the figure. Uh, they seem to be uh, actually like to start with, you can tell they're faster than you are, um, which is surprising to you. Um, they're about your size now that you've gotten a better look at them. Uh, and also you realize that the only reason you're really keeping up with them at all is because it seems like they're um, favoring their left leg. Um, perhaps, they are uh, injured. Perhaps they caught shrapnel in the blast or something like that. And that's with Lonstrider? Yeah. Damn. Did you see him? All right. Are you going to use your feline away? agility to try to catch up? In that case... You will manage to catch up with them about a block, uh, about a block north, sort of into the next alley. Um, and part of the reason that uh, you manage to just catch up in that burst of speed is because he actually has to where he was at. There isn't an easy roof access to the next place that he needed to be, so he ended up having to juke sort of to the west, um, which gave you a perfect chance to use your speed to sort of beeline and cut him off. Um, you manage to get in front of him, uh, and you, you definitely tell it's a him. Um, some sort of gnome, from what you can tell, um, just based on the, the sort of like 
chiseled uh, facial features and the curly dark hair. Maybe maybe a halfling, but they seem very thin. Um, your guess is is some sort of gnome um, in in the sort of like you know in the evening night, and there isn't a lot of light on the roof, so you don't have a lot of detail. Um, even though he ends up only being like ten or fifteen feet from you, it's still dark. Um, even with your night vision, you know you can tell what he kind of looks like, but you can't really tell what like color he is. Um, still, he rears back uh, when he sees you, turns to scrabble around, and sort of like rolls to his, uh, I guess it would be his left if he turned around, rolls to his left and just drops off the side of the building. Um, you can follow if you would like. Uh, just let me know. Nice. Nicely done, sir. Okay. Um, yeah, you, uh, you see that he, uh, he basically, um, you know, if you were to call it a video game skill, he basically safe falls. He, he, um, he rolls. You still hear him cry out as he hits the ground. You're maybe seven or eight feet behind him. Um, you wasted no time at all. Uh, you basically just leapt right off the roof at the same time and pulled the same trick. Um, however, that distance is just enough for him to make it across the alley into a door that he slams shut and locks behind him. Um, you can't see it on the map, but it's just a house. It's, it's nondescript. Um, you don't really see any indication of uh, like it being a, you know, a, a business or a base or, or anything like that. Uh, you don't know if he just picked a door random and got lucky or if this is a place he was trying to go in the first place. Um, but he's on the other side of that door and it's locked. Where am I right now, by the way? Where's uh, if you didn't chase after him, you I was chasing somewhere... after him. Okay. Then at this point, you probably, here, let me just move your token. You probably would be probably somewhere around there. That's him. You're probably right about uh, there. Okay. Um, can I say uh, to smoke? I say stand back. Uh, and then my turret uh, before charging oh, before blasting a uh, a force blast at the door force ballista is what yep. the move is called yep 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 i get it uh what uh it's not locked with a lock and key it's barred from the other side um so there's really no no way for you to just open it from your side uh, unless perhaps you want to try something like, I don't know, a force ballista. <laughs> um, I believe that is a ranged attack roll, right? Yes. Okay. So go ahead and make me one of those. Um, if you have a ranged weapon, you can just click that, that, that one's attack. That's fine. You know, I do. Okay. Let me just look where that is. Uh, actions. There we go. Clink. Oh, a natty 20. Tell me not. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, this was like, as the guy locked the door, right? Okay. I'm curious. I'm curious. Oh, uh, no, it wasn't directly as he locked the door. You're probably like seven or eight seconds behind. So, okay. um, you basically got there as, uh, as smoke gets to the door he sort of seems to like scrabble at it from your from your perspective, and then you were like smoke, and uh, so I assume he stepped out of the way because otherwise you'd be shooting him. But uh, uh, at that point, you uh, power your turret up and fire. Um, for everybody else, uh, you know, back at Trollskull Manor, um, it's from somewhere to the north. You hear another muffled thump. Um, Almost like a, almost like an explosion. Not not quite as um. What's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't have as much report as you would expect from like a fireball or something like that. 
Uh, but you definitely hear a large crashing that is loud enough um, from where you are to hear it. Uh, Karoma, you just tore um, the entire door uh, as well as two large pieces of the frame on either side, basically away from the stone wall of the house. Um, the door doesn't exist anymore. It's splinters wherever it was. Um, they're all embedded inside at this point. Uh, no smoke, but there's a lot of dust there. I mean, there is smoke there's in smoke. vial. Exactly. <laughs> And do we hear a cry out? You say, I see on the the table, there's a knee hit. Did, is there like a... Uh, well, you weren't actually um, rolling it at a person. You you, you, you basically, the, t the door took an arrow to the knee. Yeah, you knee capped the door. But here's my question. Wouldn't the splinters of the door, like the whole door, you're saying that there was no one on the other side of it? Or like yeah, and to answer your question, you essentially turned that door into, you know, an anti-personnel mine, right? Um, so if there's somebody in there, they're not making any noise that you can tell from where you're standing. Um, they may be dead. They, I mean, you'd have to go look. Smoke, are you all right? Are you all right? Oh, yeah, he's covered in dust, but not really uh, much the way, you know, much the worse for wear. Um, most of the landed. force was directed right into the door, so. Right. I, I sort of land beside him, you know, as like my, my cloak sort of, woof, and like, you know, the, the bottoms of it sort of furl out, you know. Yeah, it occurs to me Karoa probably has like little threads that could be uh, contracted or expanded, stitched <laughs> into his cloak. Exactly. Exactly. So that he could fur fur furl it dramatically, even if there's no wind. You know. <laughs> right. Right. right, right. And it sort of helps me fall at a controlled speed. I think. Absolutely. Right. Uh, okay, smoke. I assume you're poking your way into the wreckage. Um, so the house seems to be uh, empty. You don't see any large smears of blood. You don't see any bodies. Um, the inside of the house is not like completely devastated, but it definitely looks like, you know, if you could imagine what the inside of a ship would look like if a, if a cannon struck the hull and tore through it on one side. Um, the inside room looks something like that. There are, you know, skewers of, of wood, you know, some small, you know, lots of them, like almost like porcupine brills, um, but some larger, you know, some, some even like six or seven inches long, partially embedded into, into the walls, the furniture, the floor, um, all through the sort of like main room that was on the other side of this door. Um, the, building itself is empty except for that one room uh in that one room is a uh, table chairs um for looks like you know like a dining room uh there is a hearth in the sort of like back corner um that was probably a kitchen area um and in that kitchen area is a conspicuously open trap door basically set right into the floor uh, it's, it's hatch has been basically torn off, um, by whatever smashed into it when the door was thrown in. He can't be far ahead. Can we hear anything from the hatch? Like footsteps? No. Um, let me repeat for smoke. Cause it looks like he, uh, he didn't hear that. Um, looking in on the house, it looks like it's basically empty. Um, you know, the whole in the, the, it's a big open, like basically stone cottage. Um, uh, like there's stairs that lead up to what you assume are bedrooms, but then the bottom floor is basically all open. Um, in the back corner is a kitchen area. Um, in the rest of the space is like chairs for, for, you know, sitting and, and eating. Um, it's a pretty modest place. There's no real decorations. Um, however, 
in the kitchen area, um, basically right in front of the hearth, uh, is a conspicuously open trap door. Uh, it looks like it's the, the hatch has been ripped off of its hinges by the force of, of maybe a chair or some other piece of wood that slammed into it when the door was destroyed. Um, as Karoma said, he, 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 uh, what did you say? Uh, he can't be far, be- or we can't be far behind. Exactly. Hey. Nice, man. You're on your, you're on your roll game today. Uh, okay. Uh, I assume you rapidly descend into the hatch space. Uh, you basically come right into the, uh, into the sewers. Um, you don't know exactly where in the sewer network. I mean, you know that you're, you're near where you are, but you don't recognize this particular, like, you know, you're, you're near the sewers of your own basement, but, uh, you don't recognize this particular stretch in, you know, in any specific way. Um, there is no sign of the person you were pursuing directly, uh, and the whole area, both reeks of sewer, uh, and the, areas the soundscape is filled with the sound of of trickling and moving water um so you don't think you're going to be able to pick up the trail again uh that said karoma's not wrong you can't actually be that far behind uh so you know you could try to you know yeah exactly you could try to look for for any signs of 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 you know, marks on the walls that might lead you to a, a location or something like that. Um, I'll help him because I, I dropped down after him. Uh, yeah, he's already made his first investigation roll, which basically came up. Fuck, this place smells and it's kind of loud. Um, so uh, maybe he should help you when you ah. roll investigation. Okay. And if you guys are willing to do that, uh, you should click the advantage button when you roll. Uh, smoke, uh, it's a, it's a tunnel, but like 10 feet in front of you, it turns into a T branch. So the tunnel that you're in heads east, west, the T branch moves north, south. Where's the advantage button? Um, if you had to guess, he went to the T branch cause you can't see him down the tunnel in the other direction. Uh, the advantage button is the ADV button right underneath the chat rail. Ah, yes. Yeah, it's a little cryptic. I like fantasy grounds, but there is no perfect virtual tabletop. No, but I got a plus six in my investigation normally. Plus advantage, pretty fucking good. Yeah, that's pretty good odds. A 19. Oof, oof, oof. That's almost a nat 20, buddy. <laughs> yep, one point down. That's nice. Uh, okay, so you hasten to the T junction that runs north south. Um, looking down either side of the tunnel, you can't uh, you can't see your party directly. However, uh, Karoma, one thing that you do notice uh, as you look down the southern uh, the southern tunnel is that uh, there's what looks like you would guess to be a broken shoelace, sort of like half fluttering in the in the moving effluvia um half in the half in the water and half out at the edge of the tunnel um which if you had to guess probably came off the damaged boot of your prey so you guess that he is uh he is heading south um he's uh pretty far ahead of you though given that you know you can actually see pretty far uh and you don't see him down that tunnel hmm. i uh i'll gather I'll gather the shoelace because maybe okay. I can take it to a boot maker later. Um, uh, he's going south. I can't see him, but he can't be far. Did you see Smoke's question? He's asking if he can. 
Uh, yeah, based on the rules as written, I would have guessed that you came to a stop uh, at least once between when you last used it and now, so you should be fine, Smoke. Plus, you still have the uh, launch rider for the next hour. Yeah, which gives you a move of 80 feet down the tunnel in I'm, six seconds. Um, yeah. As, as he's standing next to me, my turret um, jumps from my shoulder to his. Okay. Uh, since I assume everybody is willing, there's no need to roll for any of that kind of stuff. Uh, all, right. all right. So you're going to dash uh, 160 feet down that tube. Um, hell bent. Uh, okay. You know, almost anime style. You're going to like kick up a flume behind you. I'm assuming actually, to be fair, that you're probably running on the side rail. Um, like, you know, on the, on the curved edges of the tunnel rather than running near the water at all, actually, to be fair. Um, Hell, when so, you you're know, running that fast, you can do like the Sonic the Hedgehog spiral. I was just thinking you're probably more like a fucking alien, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? You just go wherever the fuck you want at that speed. Uh, but yeah, so you're, you're hauling ass, uh, down the tunnel, um, about a hundred feet down, uh, there is another T junction. Um, however, yeah, no doubt, no, no doubt, no doubt. Um, however, as you, as you speed through the T junction, uh, you just take a look on either side and you can see that both of those tunnels are graded. So, you know, that they must've continued down unless they had some way to very quickly get through the grading, which you don't imagine is possible. Um, so I assume that you're going to continue dashing down the tunnel if you do, um, you will run the additional 80 feet out before the tunnel curves um, off to the east, uh, which will basically be right around where uh, you sort of run out of steam. Um, looking down the curve, however, you still don't see any sign of, of uh, your query. Uh, all right, I'm going to rewind time a little and go back to um, right as their rooftop adventure began and ask the folks of you who are in the tavern. Uh, Can you give me like 30 seconds while I, while I go to the bathroom? Yeah, go for it, man. Awesome. Uh, in fact, you know what? I'm actually going to go grab myself a drink because uh, my cup of tea is empty. Um, so give me 30 seconds. Okay. Nice thing about where my computer is these days. That's more literal than not. Uh -huh. I'm in my living room nowadays. Uh, so like the kitchen is like five feet from me. <laughs> that is convenient. It's also a much bigger room. Uh, very nice for like actually being able to use my VR headset. <laughs> oh. Cool. Yeah, I like my bedroom, but like you couldn't do anything but sit in your chair with a headset on in there. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm back. Welcome back. All right. So like I was saying, uh, let's rewind time for a second. Um, and let's talk to the crew who was still back at the tavern. And uh, I guess we can call it a crime scene since we're sort of sticking with a, a, a sort of, you know, Batman-y, Noari theme tonight. Um nice. So yeah, what are what are you guys going to do at the crime scene? I mean, I know that you you were helping people here and there where you could. Um, was there anything specific that you wanted to do in the moments, you know, the directly after getting outside? I I recall re uh, rolling to see if the fireball was magical, and that I was told it was. Correct. Okay. Um, in fact, if I recall, 
uh, basically you guys had concluded that it was straight up like a classic fireball fireball. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Nero. Um, I think what we were originally going to do is kind of check what the extent of the damage was, and you kind of told us last time um, where the uh, the building opposite us was kind of on fire. All the built the windows are blown out on our building, and um, is pretty much everyone gone? Is anybody? Did anybody hang around? Did the um... Yeah, I mean, a lot of the locals are still here. Um, most of your clientele are basically just nowhere to be seen. Um, a few of your friends are, are, you know, administering first aid here and there. Um, uh, I assume, like, actually, I, I, I can double check, but uh, as I recall, your passive perceptions are relatively high. 13. And so this, this circle is fairly accurate. Like the the door and windows uh, that were blown out is right where this circle is over here at the bottom right of the building across from us. Yeah, that whole uh, that whole wall kind of right there at that corner um, was on fire for a moment. Uh, it has since like the fire has since been extinguished, um, but there's still you know, smoke blacked and charred. Um, like it's basically scarred all the way across there. Um, and the, the door that was right there is basically gone. Um, yeah. And, uh, did and there are, not, what, what go, go for it. I'm wondering about the door that's right above the green circle. Uh, the one basically directly across from the tavern there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that, that has been damaged, um, but it is still intact. Um, there's sort of like a stoop structure there, uh, and it looks like the, the, the sort of supports for the stoop took a lot of the force of the blast. Okay. Um, all right. And is there anything else on fire within that circle at the moment? Uh, not any longer. Um, however, within that sort of like blast area within that circle, um, there are, if you had to guess somewhere between eight and 12, um, charred bodies in various poses spread around the area, um, including, you know, one pretty much dead center. And I would like to know. Where the hell Dolor Burning Braids of Flame is? She the second person that spoke, right? Yeah. Where's she at? Nowhere to be seen. Okay. Go ahead, Clargus. So, um, did we see where? Um, smoke and Karoma went off to. Yeah, you would have seen them at least take off uh, over the rooftop. Um, and you know, putting two and two together, you would guess that that large cr crash uh, that you will hear. Sorry, forgot we rolled back time. Uh, <laughs> but when it happens, you will hear the large crash and be able to put two and two together that that's probably related to them. Right, because that's just seconds away from us having come out. So when the explosion, when we hear the crash, I would definitely go investigate and you know try to take into account that they may have jumped over the alleyway there. Okay, so is your intention then to follow them, basically? Yeah, when I hear the explosion, try to figure out, it's like, great, more explosions? Well, that's, you know, might as well get on the case. <laughs> I'm going to stick around the crime scene. I want to know if people nearby are safe. Uh, that building across from us holds Chef Pierre and the Lama Meow sisters who uh, run the hair salon right there. So Flowery Meow's door got blown off. I want to make sure they're safe. 
totally um yeah absolutely see if i can recognize who's might be burned and charred but um if they're like right around people from troll skull alley but uh i'm just looking around to see who's safe or who needs who needs some aid yeah, no problem. Um, do you want to make a perception check for me? Let me see. Said the blonde man. I'm looking at Nero's feed. I got to go to mine. Okay, let's see what I got here. Mm. Okay, nice. Uh, so um, just checking the area, you realize that most of the injured are, you know, between um, uh, between the rest of the sort of like watchful folks in the neighborhood uh, and, and, and you know, uh, Mudar and, and basically everybody, you know, running out. Most people uh, who are injured are being tended to. Um, if you uh, if you look inside the shattered doorway, um, you will in fact find that everything inside is kind of screwed. Um, you know, almost like a earthquake hit the building. You know that kind of style of damage. Um, uh, however, nobody seems to be um, like hurt uh, in any substantial or significant way. So they're basically cleaning up in there. Um, most of the damage is on the street and like in fact parts of the street itself are, at this point are are shattered and broken the cobblestones basically pulverized by the force of the blast um eyeballing the bodies it looks like four of them might be um halflings that you had seen in the neighborhood before um they're burnt and so it's really hard to tell for sure but uh specifically troll alley troll skull alley or just the is it like they live in the buildings nearby or? Uh, yeah. You don't know that they lived anywhere specifically here. Just, you know, um, you know, from the rest of like what you saw today, that there was a, a, a group of halflings who were sort of just enjoying the bar and the tavern. And you had seen them before on the sort of like main street nearby. Right. So, you know, that wherever they, they live, it's nearby. Um, right. There's nobody from the neighborhood explicitly that you recognize in the wreckage. However, um, to be fair, it's really hard to identify some of these bodies. Um, well, I there's four half in the building nearby. So, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's nothing like that. Um, okay. Yeah, the rest of the bodies. In fact, uh, there's like a couple of dead, a uh, couple of dead humans. One of them looks like um, a fairly just based on what's left of, of her clothes, uh, probably an, an, an older woman judging from the style, but also somebody who probably had a little bit of money. Maybe she was coming to hear a speaker, something like that. Hard to tell. You don't really know her. Um, like again, not a local. Um, there are a couple of like cloaked, uh, humans. Uh, one of them, you can see a sword at their side. Um, but there are no obvious like identifying marks to say that they were with a particular group. Um, maybe they were cell swords. Who, who knows? Um, one relatively uh, like still dead, but relatively unscarred corpse. There is uh, obviously a half elf um, and dressed in the clothes of you actually don't recognize the, the heraldry, but dressed in the heraldry of a local noble. So you're guessing they were a servant, probably picking something up from the neighborhood from one of the craftsmen here. And what about the center body? Not the centaur body, but the center. Yeah, body. right, right. Uh, yeah, the center body is uh, kind of small. Um, you would You would guess, if not another halfling, then something like a halfling. Um, not so stout as to be a dwarf, but you know, stouter than say like a gnome. Um, Perhaps they are also, um, they are also cloaked. 
um, in one burned hand uh, is a dagger that had been drawn. Um, you can tell because the, the sheath for the dagger is on their belt uh, and still relatively intact as that side of their body was slammed to the ground by the blast. Um, they, uh, they don't seem to be wearing any, uh, anything that you can identify. Um, they're, you know, leather, some leather clothes, they're scorched. Um, no real marks there. Um, the next closest corpse is, uh, uh another male, uh, or an, a male human. Um, sorry, I shouldn't say another, but a male human. Uh, and there's only one like identifying mark at all on that corpse that you can tell. Um, and you say male because what, what's basically left unburned is a forearm that's like kind of hairy. Um, so, you know, to be fair, it, it may not be male, but you're guessing that that's a male hand. Um, and on that forearm is a, a tattoo uh, of a, like a black snake coiled around a stick. Um, like a, I, I say stick, but like a line, like a nondescript bar, basically. Uh, you don't recognize the mark yourself. Uh, it's just, well, whatever, whoever that guy was, he had a tattoo of a black snake around a bar on his arm. All right. All right. Uh, okay. Um, Clargus, are you, uh, are you going to head into that alley? Is that like, you, you, you did say that you were heading that way. So is that your intent? Yeah. Yeah, if that's where it seems like it came from. I don't know how many rooftops they might have gone over, but it seems like they at least kind of cleared the first one. Yeah, sure. And if you make it over into that alley, it's pretty obvious where that that noise comes from. Um, you can see the sort of shattered remains of the door frame. Uh, and there are people milling about that alley at this point. Um, you know, dozens of, of, of folks from the neighborhood uh, who are basically like, what the hell is going on? You know, mm -hmm. um, within the, the course of what a minute, they basically heard two massive explosions and one of them happened in their own neighborhood. So they're all a little um, tense to say the least. Right. Um, hmm. I think I'm still going to head in the exploded doorway. Um, even with the people looking, because nobody's really going to stop a bugbear. True. <laughs> and uh, in that, I would likely see the uh, trap door and uh, head down to uh, expecting that it's the sewer. It's like, oh, great, this is some mafia stuff. <laughs> can, he fit, can he fit through the trap door? Is he too thick to fit through it? No, he'll fit. That's funny, though. I mean, he's he's a bugbear, so you know. Yeah, Absolutely. But bugbears are pretty. They they Big. can make themselves pretty small and narrow when they need to. They're very stealthy. They're not. <laughs> bugbears are not stealthy. They literally have stealth built in. Do they really? Yes. <laughs> the natural solitary hunters. Yes, they are very stealthy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so as you expect, I mean, you know, people take note of you walking by, but nobody actually stops you. Um, yeah, you head down in... Uh, sorry, Diggs, I didn't notice it was waiting for confirmation there. Um, you head down into the sewer. It is very sewery. Um, there are basically only two directions to go from where you are at, um, east and west, uh, directly to the east. Um, not very far at all. You can see uh, uh, looks like it ends at a T junction. Off to the west, it dims into darkness. You can't actually see really tunnel, tunnel ends. Hmm. Um, if you stop and listen, you can hear uh, scrabbling, scratching, um, like loud echoing noises coming from the east so like it's pretty easy for you to try to catch up with the group if that's your intent okay then yeah i would head that way okay cool in which case uh you will probably catch up with them um basically right as smoke sort of like screeches to a halt looks down a corner and then comes back to this t-junction um you have dark vision right bugbears can see in the dark 
believe so. Let me double check on that. Abilities. Uh... Yeah, Dark Vision 60. It's actually on the main page. Oh, oh whoops. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you actually can't see him from where uh, you and Karoma are, because uh, Karoma would be the first of the pair that you would you would come across. Um, but you can hear his sort of like mad dash down the tunnel, sort of come to a stop. Um. Okay. Clark, uh, hold on. I said Clargus. How is it back at the at the tavern? Well, there's a bunch of dead people. And most of our folks left, but probably better that they scurry off for the moment. More folks from the neighborhood are starting to come out, and I would imagine there's going to be guards, uh, city guard up here in just a moment. So, uh, how'd that, how'd this door get, or how'd this wall or whatever get blown open where you guys are at here? Which one? Uh, oh, I would imagine that second explosion. Uh, oh yeah, you meant how? Yeah, how did that door get blown off on that on the yeah, cottage? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I removed it in pursuit of the bastard who killed those people back at our bar. Let's just say it was the bastard who killed the people back at the bar who did it, shall we? Um, for liability. Ah. Uh, fair. Uh, so I would imagine we, uh, we lost the trail. Sewers being what they are. Um... Except that b the bastard has given us everything we need to find him. Oh, really? He may have gotten away for now, but he left something behind that will allow us to track him down. And I, I, re yeah, I reveal the shoelace. <laughs> well, if that's his, and you can make some sort of device to track with it, then uh, I'm all for it. Or a spell. At the very least, if it can help us figure out this individual's uh, presence when they're nearby, I imagine they'll come back to check out the crime scene later. Uh, can I hear? Um, Generally. Uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, Smoke, uh, you, you skid to a halt. Uh, you realize that you've probably lost the dude. You backtrack to that uh, that T junction where the sides were graded off. Um, I assume you want to investigate that area to see if maybe there was a a way for him to have sort of like dodged you or something? Question mark. Nice. Very nice. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you take a look at the grading on both sides. Um, the side that leads west seems to be uh, basically worthless to you. Like, there's no obvious way that you could get through that grate. And even if you could, uh, you can tell from the noise the water makes uh, that there is a um, like a dead drop, probably of of as much as thirty feet, probably ten or fifteen feet down the tunnel from where you're at. Um, and from the sound the water is making, you can guess that there's no easy way down that way. Um, like maybe you could have jumped, but you guess you would have heard him if he did. Um, the tunnel to the east, on the other hand, seems to go on quite a way. You don't, uh, you don't actually see uh, an end to it from where you're at um, with, your, uh, with your vision. Uh, as you look at the grate, it doesn't seem to move. It seems to be permanently in place. Um, which is actually a little weird. You know that most of the grates in the sewer have been designed to be removed and replaced as needed by whatever the um, current sort of like plan for this ever-growing, evolving, organic sort of sewer underneath Waterdeep uh, calls for. Uh, so you know that the grate's been there for a long time. Um, there doesn't seem to be any obvious way that it moves. There doesn't seem to be any sort of like trick catches or releases. Um, no pressure plates, no, no false doors. Um, that said, that's not normal. That isn't an oddity. Um, you don't find any obvious markings on it. No. Um, if you had to guess based on the fact that you can't see the end of the tunnel, 
um, you would guess that it probably leads east, uh, you know, for at least a couple of, uh, I guess we'll call them blocks, a couple of neighborhoods. Um, uh, but that's, like I said, a guess, you know, that's just, just what you can tell. And it seems quiet. There's no, um, there's no obvious sign that anybody had been down there. But on the other hand, I mean, the, the suit is flowing relatively freely, so maybe there wouldn't be. Uh, it doesn't look like it can be opened. When I, when I commented earlier on it being there permanently, that's what I mean. I mean, this isn't a grate that you can normally like remove if you needed to. The, the individual bars of the grate have been embedded in the stonework, both uh, at the top and the bottom of each vertical pole and onto the left and the right of each of the horizontal um, poles of the gate. Uh, great, excuse me, not gate. Um, so yeah, that's odd. Um, but that's really the only thing that, that that's of any sort of note that you can tell offhand. And you gave it a pretty thorough look. So you feel pretty confident that uh, you're not going to like come up with some new discovery if you get a magnifying glass or something, you know? As he comes back... I uh, I ask him, did you get a look at them? Interesting. Hmm. They were fast. Any identifiable symbols or patterns or anything kind of glinting off of them? Uh, here, let me uh, let me step in and provide some details for you. I mean, uh, so he was cloaked, uh, dressed in dark leather, um, like blackened leather, like not just, you know, leather that happened to be dark, but like le leather that was deliberately darkened. Um, he had relatively short, but, but oily, uh, dark hair. Um, again, smoke didn't really see color. Uh, and his skin was, you know, shadowed, uh, in his, in the hood of his cloak. So really not much more that he could say there. Um, but he was fast, like really really fast not supernaturally fast but man like that was a fast motherfucker faster than smoke i put yeah. my hand on smoke's shoulder and i said it was a valiant effort you pursued him well hmm. fret not we have everything we need to track him down question when i was staring at his face when i got caught up to that one time did i smell anything about him because he would have been well within smell range. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, actually, absolutely. Nice. Uh, you smelled rose water. Rose water? Tea shop? Yeah. Right. Um, you know, like the smell of, of light perfume or, a, or an herbal or floral tea. Yeah, exactly. Sounds like a nobleman. Or at least a merchant. Not someone who lives in the slums, that's for sure. Mm. Uh, do, do you respond at all when I put my hand on your shoulder and I tell you what I told you? I'm just blinking, thinking, trying to remember things, trying to find more things to track the one that we're tracking. I don't like those that attack my home. Mm. It's or our city. Mm, true. Apparently. But the city is home, right? It is to me. He'll pay for those he killed. Mm. Need to get back, help the others. I was trying to catch him so we could take care of it quickly. Okay. Sorry I let him go. That's all right. He was too fast for either of us. But... I wonder I was... what enchantments he had. Because you... You you made me move super quick, and I I try to push as much as I could. Do you know of anything that can make someone move that quick? 
Perhaps he's a creature that simply appeared about like a gnome or halfling, but is mm -hmm. not in fact one. Mm. Perhaps. Possible. Or an not artifact. That's the strangest thing. Perhaps an artifact could grant him that speed, but beyond that, I suppose we'll mm. find out. We Maybe should return to more. Uh, oh, we should return to digs and mm. more. And Moodar and help them clean up Moodar. the place and help the others. Indeed. On that note, I start to oh, make my way back to the uh, entrance. But I, I make a mental note, which is to say, in my sort of uh, my memory file, my map file, I make oh, a note oh, of this. Karama, tunnel. question: y You've lived in this place for much a long time, yes? Yes, hundreds of years. Why would they make the great not move? Hmm. There's That's one up the way a little ways that it's it's braced. Like you would have to do the wam bam thing again to make it open. That is a mystery. I thought they all had to move because uh, cleaning and such. Normally, yes. It's it's possible that these tunnels are regularly used by the criminal element. It seemed like there was a trap door in this house already pre-built to allow a speedy escape. I imagine these tunnels are owned or at least operated by one of the major crime syndicates. Oh, as, I, I as an wonder. aside... Uh, just as an aside, you guys have already seen evidence that uh, Xanathar's uh, syndicate uh, uses these tunnels with impunity, so that's a pretty safe bet. Probably Xanathar. But I didn't see any of the usual markings. They they always mark their territory. Sometimes. Good point. Mm. Actually, they've been Perhaps like... we missed something. I was going to say, and everything you saw, everything was pretty clearly marked once you knew what to look for. Mm. Then perhaps there, there was no no marking. Look. Give me a sec. Also, give me a sec, guys. Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, Diggs. Um, as you're going around and you know making sure that everybody's safe and and looking at the stuff. Um, as I was going the... around checking, I found a very curious pouch that was covered in mud and muck. It seems like it was from the sewers. I'd like to open the pouch and see what's in there. Oh uh, yeah, no problem. Okay. Um inside the pouch are uh hold on, let me let me roll 1d8 here. Well, hot damn. Uh inside the pouch are are eight um perfectly cut rubies. Um each of them basically the the size of like uh Hmm. What's a what's a good comparator? They're about about the circumference of a of a quarter. Um, like imagine a like lozenge about that size. Um, you can guess their rubies just from the way they feel in your hand. Um, but they're they're perfectly shaped and polished. Um, they're uh, I mean exquisite, honestly. Okay, I'm back. Thanks for waiting. Um. So that's the case. What's the case? Um, I found on the center corpse uh, a pouch from that person. And inside really? that pouch are eight rubies. The circumference of a quarter. Uh, and I'm wondering. If uh, I'm wondering if those might be casting reagents for uh, fire spells, and I'm gonna roll our 
Arcana for that. Uh, okay. I mean, they they could be material components for spells. Um, however, just judging from their size and quality, uh, either you're talking about some pretty powerful fire magic, um, like not necessarily the kind of magic you would need to have prepared in a pouch for walking around on the street, uh, or they're like wasting really good rubies. Um, that said, it's possible, like absolutely, um, could very well be reagents for fire spells uh, or other spells for that matter. Um, that said, like I said, those are those are probably worth a fairly decent amount of money. Uh, so it would either have to be some useful magic or uh, a maybe not financially aware mage. Okay. Um, as you're uh, as you're talking um, from directly south, uh, basically uh, two houses over, um, one of the uh, the shopkeepers steps out. Uh, her name is uh, Fallock. She runs the uh, herbalist shop, um, Coralon's Crown. Uh, she comes out to assist people. Um, and to, you know, tell her story in the way that survivors of, of these things often do in the moments directly after them happening. Uh, she says, um, I was watering plants in the greenhouse on the second floor of my shop when the, the blast blew out the windows. I was lucky I wasn't injured. Uh, through the smoke, I saw a cloaked man taking something from the body of the dead gnome. Uh, then they started limping away. Uh, he was badly burned and classic ca casting glances over his shoulder like he was afraid someone might be following him. He was headed towards the bent nail. Mm -hmm. Oh, God damn it. I'm a, li I'm, I'm a liar. He was headed towards uh, the tiger's eye. Ha, 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 ha. So say that again for me, please. Uh, yeah, she, she says. Stuff got blown out. Yeah, uh -huh. her windows were blown out, and then she said, "Through the smoke, I saw a cloaked man taking something from the body of the gnome." Um, that person limped away. He was badly burned, uh, but he was casting glances over his shoulder the whole time, like he was afraid someone might be following him. Uh, he was headed towards the bent nail. Uh, you know, the bent nail is is uh, northwest of where the blast was. You mean the tiger's yeah, claw? God damn it! Yes, the tiger's eye. Yeah. Um. Uh. I don't know who the gnome was. I don't. Well, now that. I don't believe her either. <laughs> she, keeps saying, <laughs> she keeps changing up her story. Which direction was it, lady? Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh. Uh. You're guessing that she's referring to the body. Uh. At the center of the explosion. Oh, okay. Uh, wasn't known. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's the um, only one that could fit the bill, basically. Yeah. And uh, 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 and the person she's well, I wouldn't know that. So. When any other people in the party might. Uh, yeah, you of the living person. You do actually hear one of the people in the in the sort of like crowd, uh, sort of answer back to her as she tells her story. Um, he, he says, uh, uh, and you could tell he's like distraught. This is probably the scariest thing that's ever happened to this guy. Based on his clothing, he probably comes from a relatively well-off family. Uh, it, you know, if he's not a noble himself, then he absolutely fucking works for one. Uh, but he, he's a little worked up is really all I'm getting at. Uh, and he says, I, I tell you, it, it, it wasn't a, it, it wasn't a gnome or a, or a man. It was more like a, a, a puppet shaped like a man, a, a puppet without strings. It was on the rooftop. It hurled something into the crowd below that caused the explosion. I saw those halflings burned alive. I saw them. A puppet without uh, strings? Uh, 
We're not uh, back and, yet, right? We're so, this is all just out of character. Uh, right, no, you sorry. actually, th this is right as you returned back to the alley. Yeah. So well, how much of this have we heard and witnessed? You probably heard all of it, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And nobody's well, talking to you directly. This is just people in the crowd relaying their experiences. And he said, so wait, what did he say one more time? He said something about a puppet without strings? Yeah, um, he's... He, he he was like it. It wasn't even a a, a gnome or, or or a man. It was a it was a puppet shaped like a man. A, a puppet without strings. It was on the rooftop. It hurled something into the crowd below that caused the explosion. I approached I saw this it. man. Sounds like Karoma to me. I <laughs> I, I approached this man. What did this puppet look like? Uh okay um. Would you do me a favor and roll a charisma check for me? Oh, sure. Uh, I'd like to, as I'm, I'd like to uh, have uh, Smoke accompany me. I'm going to use his cat, his cute childlike cat features, because he's a, still a child cat, <laughs> to help charm him. Mm -hmm. right, you're going to have him do the eyes. You're going to. Yeah. I'm going to have him do the eyes. I have a question, cat. mister. What do you mean, like a puppet without strings? <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't he still look like a man? Um, right. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, give, give me the roll. Uh, you can roll that with advantage. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, I figure I need to do a performance because I'm being all, uh, yeah, assisting you. Oh, a nat 20. A nat motherfucking 20. Nice. Oh, that's the second one. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, Be okay. Careful, sir. He's um, like, also, here's my social security. and <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. And my first daughter's hand in marriage. <laughs> oh, thank God. My hero. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, yeah, so he, he looks up at you too, as you, as you ask. And, and, and he says, it didn't, it didn't move right. It, it seemed like it was in one spot for a moment, and then and then immediately in another. Like it no, blinked, or it did it walk funny. It seemed it was like a blur at times. Nothing moves that fast. Nothing. Is that it? Yeah, he sort of trails off. He's got that That's all I got for there. a nat 20. <sighs> yeah. um, you, you said you blur. Like, what kind of blur? It. Like, hazy blur? Or, like, the, the really fast chef guys that over on the, on the other street, when they do the street stuff, you know, the, the ones that do the cha-cha-cha-cha-cha-cha deal? He nods, and he says, yes, like, moving so fast that I couldn't see it's it's shape at times and then at other times it seemed to like stop uh <sighs> nothing like moves like still? that exactly after images what did mm. it glow no no interesting thank you mister i wonder uh, how somebody moves like that uh, digs. Um, Someone doesn't. Something might. From the fringe of the crowd, uh, a 12 year old boy um, walks up to you. Um, and you, you can tell that he's kind of, uh, he's, ki he's kind of in shock. Um, and he, he, he seems to want to like hover over by the, um, by the, the four halflings. Uh, he looks at you and he says, um, are are you are you going to are you, are you the guard? Shouldn't something be done? And he he points down and he says they were my friends. Uh, and he sort of trails off at that. We are not the guard. We own a tavern. Uh, I'm a scribe. We will report this to the guards, and we might investigate on our own. I'm surprised the uh, guard hasn't arrived yet. These were your Who, who, who were they? Do you know who they were? Can you give us more information? 
Uh, yeah, he, he he looks down at the at the halflings and he says, "I invited them today. Um, it's your tavern." And he, he points back. He says, uh, mm. "I I thought that we could we could come and 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 see it uh, as it opened. Um, we were we were playing on the street uh, when the when the fire happened. I I dove behind the I dove behind a barrel." Uh, and he points across the street over at the uh, over at the other building on the other side of the uh, of the explosion, <clears throat> and he says, and he says, I I watched them, I I I watched them, and and then that's when I heard it, uh, and he sort of like reaches in into his his tunic and he, he pulls out uh, what looks like you would guess is a necklace, and he says, this dropped into the barrel. Uh, and he hands you uh, what looks like basically a leather line um, with a couple of red beads on it. Um, uh, it looks like, just judging from the marks on the line, that there may have been at least one more bead on this uh, on this necklace than than there was before. Like there's a, a discolored piece on the leather um, that sort of mimics the discoloration between the other two beads, um, but it's gone now. If if there was. Um, it seems like it was damaged or taken or. Uh, you have no idea how the, how the missing bead ended up missing. Um, like at this point it's just gone. Um, the child, uh, he, he basically just says somebody dropped it into the barrel. Um, he, he heard the noise as he was hiding. Uh, he couldn't bear to watch anymore. Um, and once the fire was out, he he reached inside and 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 found this, uh, and he basically just hands it to you. And he says, "If you talk to the guard, you should give it to them." I think, I think the bad guy had it. Thank you, son. We'll make sure this gets taken care of. Don't you worry. Who who who's taking care of you? Uh, he says, "Oh no, my my family." And he points down the west side of the or the east side, rather. God damn it! I'm going to do that all fucking night. I swear to God. <laughs> towards uh, the uh, towards the uh, the tiger's eye, right? Or no, in, in this case, towards the bent nail. <laughs> oh, are you sure? I don't trust you anymore. <laughs> are uh, you sober, sir? Because I question you so bright right now. Uh, and he says, uh, "He says, no, my family lives there. I I I I'll be okay." Then. The neighborhood's safe, you think, right? Seems to be safe for now. Uh, and in fact, as you're talking, you can hear um, the cry of a griffin from above. And you can see, if you look up, uh, that there is a, a, uh, a member of the city watch uh, of the griffin guard specifically. Um, basically now circling over the, uh, over the neighborhood. Um, it's probably only a matter of seconds before the guard arrives at this point. I'm going to make myself scarce. I was going to start cleaning up the, the glass. Um, should we keep it so we can melt it down to make glass skin? <laughs> uh, you forgot that your house casts mending on itself every night. Uh, that's first floor. I'm talking about second floor. Uh, yeah, no, that's a good point. You guys are... <laughs> we didn't do the second level on the on the enchant. We only did the first level. Yep, I forgot about that. That's too bad. Yeah, uh, yeah. That way, by the way. Uh, her and Keegan all are both okay. Um, they're inside the tavern, basically sweeping and and cleaning up. Um, Sally had come out at first for a little while, uh, but then she went back inside. I'm gonna ask them. Did he, what? Did either of you see anything? Are you all right? Oh uh, yeah, they both will say yeah. They they both tell you they're all right. Um, Keegan all says he he wasn't even looking uh, at the window at the time, um, but you know as soon as the the windows blew out, he he saw the fire uh, and and you know he saw that there were people in it. Um, but he doesn't that, really have much to report. Uh, is that way? Did you detect any magic? from any of the creatures, especially the ones that seem to run away? Uh, she says, uh, 
there was one on the rooftop who seemed odd. Um, I was going to mention it. In fact, it's why I came outside. Uh, I don't know that it was human though. It looked like it was. It's possible somebody could have cast a spell on it for it to move the way it did. It was very fast. Any spells you might know of? Oh, there are several. Hmm. Um, does this, the, do the beads that, um, does Dick show her the beads? I owe everyone the beads. Who's the her? Sally. I show you guys the 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 as zilly as around when I show the rest of you, sure. I was gonna give it to Karoma. Interesting. These beads. Yet another nail in the coffin. We have mm. everything we need. It could be a burner fire. item. May not have linked to him. Hmm. We'll find out. Mm, but does does this have magic or was magic? Oh uh, yeah. If you show it to Zelly, she'll she'll tell you immediately. Oh yeah, that's uh that's uh that's pretty much a classic. Um that's probably very old. Uh each of those beads is uh and then she looks out the window and she goes, that must be what casts the fireball. Each of those beads contains a fireball. You, you can see it if you know how to look. Um, does it re re recharge or is it one and done? Oh, no, they don't come back. Ah, uh, sad. This kind of magic. Expendable. Old, huh? I wonder who may have a treasure trove of relics like this expendable to <clears throat> go perform assassinations with. That definitely does sound more like a Xanathar sort of thing. Indeed. Whoever did this had the means and the skill. Certainly. <laughs> Zelly. And it wasn't cheap. Yeah, Zelly nods and she says, they're good, they're good treasure. Um, you can get a lot of gold for them. More gold than the rubies. Oh yeah! If you show her, if you show her the rubies, her eyes will kind of sparkle, and she says, "Maybe about the same." <laughs> Those are nice. You cannot have them, Zoe. But they're pretty shinies. Everyone they wants are, pretty shinies, right, Zoe? They are exquisitely shiny too. <laughs> Zoe's like, hmm. <laughs> Yeah, they, thinking to herself, like, I know exactly where to put those. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, with this and the shoelace, we should be able to track some location or tracking magic. It should. Uh, Karoma, you were going to make yourself scarce, right? Yeah. Uh, what's your plan for making yourself scarce? Uh, uh, retreat into the shadows. Typical. Okay. Uh, like, are you heading inside to the house? Are you heading inside to the tavern? Are you, like, Batman escaping across the rooftops? Yeah, I'm heading... I would not do rooftops since there's griffins already. Yeah. No, I agree. Plus, there was already one criminal on the rooftop. No, I'm heading into the house to start uh, reconfiguring myself to be able to cast uh, location magic. Because I have to teach myself the spell. Right, right. I get it. Uh, so you're going to try to track that lace, I'm assuming? Yep. Cool, cool. What spells What spells allow you to... I mean, I could. I suppose I could craft a tool, but... I was thinking I would just download a spell, if there is a spell. I know that there are spells that allow you to track people. I still remember what they're called. Aren't those like third, fourth, fifth sort of range spells? 
Yeah, right. I was going to say, uh, I mean, scrying is maybe a complicated example, but it was the first one that came to mind. But that's like a level five spell. Oh, okay, then I'll, I'll start building a tool. I was thinking something like a, uh, some sort of bug, like a, uh, kind of Horizon Zero Dawn style bug. Right, I get you. That Realistically, like I mean, that's a weird word to use on our D&D adventure, but uh, uh, pragmatically, that's better. Pragmatically, uh, it's probably going to be pretty hard to create a tracking device uh, for uh, a shoelace that's been in the sewer. Um, but it was hanging off of something. That Yeah, it like was just half in the water and, and half out. Part of it was. Um, but uh, you could perhaps go the route of building tools to forensically analyze it, uh, maybe try to learn something about it or where it may have come from to sort of track it back that way, I suppose. Yeah, all right. I'll I'll do that in order to analyze the material and perhaps the date and age and and see if there's uh, a, a specific part of the town or city that I uh, can track it back to because I think m my goal here is to uh, either find where it was made or find someone who can tell us where it was made to then track down who might have bought it uh, and or I would suggest we either use Zelly to cast a scry spell or find a mage who can, which we should have access to. Well, yeah, I mean, in theory, you, you know the you know the gray hands, yeah. Like exactly. you certainly exactly. have access to someone who could cast scry. It probably exactly. doesn't come free. Um, yeah. We've got like, rubies. I was going to say the the cost of the material components alone are about a thousand gold. So right, and uh, and I, would I have this uh, rubies from them. This just fire found them. Let's I have this do. fireball necklace that we could barter uh, with. Let's. Let's not throw away useful tools before we know what's going on. That's. I mean, I'm not literally saying this to all of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, right. Of no, nor nor am I saying this to you. I'm just, I'm the little uh, cat on your shoulder. Like, meow. We just got shinies. You just don't meow shinies away. Hmm. Meow. <laughs> yep. You hang on to them. And I and I, I sort mean... of. Achoo. Damn allergies. We're gonna need to do something that's gonna help us cover the um, the cost of restoring Repairs. the rooms and the rest of the building. Otherwise, it's not gonna self repair those windows. Yeah, exactly. I'm Which... not jumping to. I'm not literally walking over and contracting someone's help. I'm I'm forensically analyzing this. I'm just saying this is what my intentions are long term. Yep. No, that makes sense. Like, we have to track down this person, regardless. Fuck repairing the tavern, because they're criminal. I mean, that takes priority. He's murdered people. And... Yep, that's it. Indeed. Uh, okay, so... Um, the, uh, the guard arrives pretty quickly after you spot the, the griffin. Um, uh, and they arrive, you know, relatively in force. Well, I don't know. They arrive as a squad. Calling them in force is maybe an exaggeration. But uh, they, they arrive, a squad of six guardsmen uh, and a sergeant, uh, and immediately divide themselves up into two teams that cordon off the north and south uh, exits uh, of the alley. Um, uh, and they they sort of start to corral people, you know, and they say, "All right, all right, all right. Nobody leaves. Uh, nobody comes in. I'm going to want to talk to all of you." Uh, the sergeant says, and he says, "Well, I don't want to talk to any of you, but uh, one of my superiors will be along, and he'll want to talk to all of you. So uh, don't go anywhere. Uh, anybody need uh, a healer?" Uh, and he starts looking among the the people that are injured and and. Uh, sort of taking stock of the situation. You can hear all of this from the tavern. This dude is, is uh, Drill Sergeant Loud. Um, 
Yeah, these people on the street haven't been dead for long, if you've got anything for that. <laughs> uh, he bites back a remark. Um, y- you don't know what he was going to say, but uh, he sort of coughs it behind the hand, and he says, oh, well, the, um, the, the watch doesn't necessarily um, have those kinds of resources, but... Uh, we we certainly uh we, we 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 certainly let the wizards know. Um, I don't I don't know that I would uh, hold out hope. Uh, and he sort of toes one of the the corpses near him, um, and he says, "There's only so much you can do." So so wait so how many guardsmen are there? Uh, there are a total of seven if you count the sergeant plus one dude flying a griffin circling overhead. Um, right now, they're sort of split. Uh, three on the north sort of side, um, directly north of the explosion area, and then three on the south exit of the alley uh, over there, uh, while the sergeant is sort of moving through the the alley space, the sort of courtyard in the middle of the alley. Um Corralling people, taking stock, talking to people, etc. And what's the racial makeup of the one? What, like the sergeant? Oh, the sergeant's a uh, pretty standard, uh, pretty standard human. Okay. And what about the rest of? Uh, I mean, they're they're wearing helmets and leather armor. Most of them seem like they're probably human. They might, uh, they maybe could be elves or half elves, but they're probably all human. Okay. I'm gonna try to uh, hide and listen as they do their surveillance probably shadow the sergeant if he's the one doing the investigation. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the whole time that he's like talking to people, uh, he has like, uh, in one hand, a, a sort of like, um, I guess journal would be the way to put it, you know, a book, a, a, a bound book with empty pages. Um, uh, and in, in one hand he has, uh, what looks like, I mean, you, we would call it a pencil, but it's basically a charcoal stick. Uh, and he's, he's basically taking notes, um, as he, as he talks, uh, <clears throat> he's, uh, loud, um, kind of cynical. Uh, but I mean, he seems like maybe his heart's in the right place. Like most, like the very first thing he did was see to the injured. Um, most of his questions are about what people saw. Um, pretty much everybody at this point is reciting the same sort of sequence of events uh, that uh, that you heard firsthand from uh, the shopkeep, the the rich dude in shock, and, and the kid. Um, which, you know, I mean, if we're going to make a commentary on, on investigation, probably means that they're discussing it out loud, accidentally seated all of the uh, eyewitness accounts, but Hey man, it is what it is. Kid still around, or did the kid go home? The the kid went home. He's not there. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying, what you hear people recount is basically what you heard those three say. Yeah. Um, it it takes maybe five minutes of of him making the the sort of rounds. Uh, for another group to arrive. Uh, this group uh, is led by... Um, uh, hold on, let me pull up... Uh, let me see if I can pull up a picture. Yeah, perfect, okay. Uh, this group is led by one of the uh, one of the watchful order of mages and protectors, um, a man in purplish robes wearing a large gold medallion. Um, next to him in this picture stands our our uh, our sergeant. By the way, holding the journal. 
Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, so this dude shows up uh, with uh, like another dozen or so people. Um, and they begin to take more efficient command uh, of the situation. Um, and, and you actually, uh, you, you hear the guy introduce himself uh, to the sergeant uh, as a Barnabas Blastwind. Um, and he's actually a, a senior magist uh, at the Watchful Order. Uh, the uh, sergeant introduces himself as Sergeant Cromley. Uh, and he says, well, I've been, I've been told that, uh, whatever, whatever you need is whatever we're supposed to give you. So, uh, you just tell me what to do. Uh, and so, uh, Barnabas then says, okay, let's divide everybody up. Let's go house to house. Uh, let's find out who in this neighborhood perhaps is more suspicious than the others. He says, I'm certain that what we want is here. Uh, and this, the sergeant says, well, we've already heard the first hand, uh, can he points down to his journal? Uh, and Barnabas says, nap, nap. let's not color the evidence. Let's, let's find out for ourselves, shall we? Go ahead, divide the group. And so with a sigh, Cromley goes back to not only his squad, but now the newly arrived guard members. Uh, so now there's a total of 18 of them. Um, 19, if you count the sergeant. Uh, and he says, uh, well, you heard the man. And he starts pairing them off and says, you guys take that side. You guys take that side. Figure it out. I'm going to go see what else he wants. And they begin to sort of break up and go um, house to house. He's one of those types. Table talk, not saying that aloud. <laughs> so I'd probably go over and seeing that he's the one that's kind of barking the orders now. And uh, look, look very far down at him. Because uh, I'm guessing it's kind of <laughs> short there. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, so we uh, we were pursuing the person who we suspect did this um, attack here. Not sure who the target of the attack was necessarily, or why they chose to do something as um, conspicuous as a giant fireball right on our opening day of the tavern, no less. But unless they were there to ruin our good time, uh, I I really have no idea why this happened here. However, we tracked to the um, the neighborhood just to the northwest of here, in the alleyway. Uh, they went down that way. They blew the wall open to get down into a building with a trap door that led into the sewer. Now, I'm sure you've been around in the city. You know what happens in the sewer. This time of day, this amount of filth, hard to track someone. They gave no sign of where they went. Unfortunately, we lost the trail. Your sewer squad will catch them, right? Of course you have one. He, he, uh, he looks up, he adjusts his glasses, and he says, uh, quite quite a story so uh, you then are part of the um the group responsible for any points sort of down the north side of the of the alley um basically towards the edge of your you know your uh your property and he says the the uh, let's call it a blast across the way uh they did that in pursuit. That was a different explosion. That I didn't see. Ah, didn't didn't you literally tell me <laughs> to, that it was the other guy who did yeah, it? Yeah, that's keep what I was saying. Them. That's that's what I would. He that's... said he didn't see it. Yeah, and now you're saying, oh no, that was us. 
No, that was I, a, I no, said he said he didn't see it. Yeah, I said the person who we were pursuing did that in pursuit that they blew the door open, but I didn't see that part. That so the guy that we were chasing blew the door open, right? Mm -hmm. That's not what you're saying. You're saying in pursuit we blew the door. No, open. I'm no, saying no, 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 no. The dude being pursued blew the door open blew in the door pursuit open while he was being That's pursued. Not Right, okay. To get down the The chase door. he was, as he was flying, fleeing, blew the door open, and we flew through it. Right. Are you, uh, are you going to offer this uh, to Barnabas, Smoke? Oh, no, I'm, I'm in the house cleaning. I have no idea what's Perfect. going okay. on. La yeah, la la. No. I'm I just was... trying to make sure that I understand what the table talk is saying right now because yeah. I'm getting confuzzled and I was there. <laughs> yeah, I want to I want to make sure that's absolutely clear. I'm placing the blame on both explosions on this guy that um he must have blown the wall open somehow when he was on his way out. Yeah. It wasn't entirely clear. That's why I said something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the the uh the question that Barnabas is sort of asking uh, when he asks is, uh, oh, yeah, is that true? Uh, what he asked you was, oh, so you were involved with that blast to the north. Uh, to which you replied, that blast was them in pursuit. That, oh, yeah, I would uh, uh, definitely clarify to him that um, the the person that we were uh, chasing uh, apparently made is that. the them yeah he can't this the is the monster the on the roof then he says sort of skeptically looking back over at the sergeant's journal certainly i see i see they were apparently cloaked all black hard to really get a look at them in the shadows Looked like some sort of a gnome or a halfling from what my uh, friend was saying. Interesting. Interesting. Write that down, Cromley. Cromley looks looks over and goes, I, yeah, I have, I, I have that right here. <laughs> now, immediately, I would think a Zentarum would be walking around in all black. That's kind of their thing. However... There is nothing really notifying that, signifying that on them. And they're usually pretty bold about their uh, imagery and identification. So most likely it was some sort of assassin um, just using all black as much as they possibly could to hide their identity. Barnabas nods. He actually, um, he points down to uh, a, a couple of the, uh, the corpses. Um, and he says, those are probably Zentarum, actually. Uh, I think you might be right about that. Surprisingly, we had uh, folks from both Zentarum and Xanathar's Guild peacefully, you know, keeping an eye on one another uh, at separate tables on the first floor. So if there was going to be any violence, I certainly wouldn't be thinking it would be then and there. And this is at your tavern, you say, the one that you just opened tonight. Certainly. This was our opening night. We were hoping for, uh, of course, a better ending for the night here. But, well, things happen. Yeah, a hell of an opening night, he says. Very interesting. Interesting. Well, you won't mind if we have a a look around. If, if you said there, there were, there were Zentarum and and members of Xanathar's guild there. Uh, perhaps they left something behind of value. Yeah, I'll show you which tables they were sitting at. Excellent, excellent. He says, uh, "Crumley, come with me." Uh, by the way, I've been cleaning this entire time. Have I found anything shiny? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> uh, hold on a second. Uh, let me see how I want to do this. Because you left the pickpocket in free access of all of the shinies that people most likely dropped on their way to GTFO. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, 
I'm just cleaning up the place. Uh, yep. You wanna uh, you wanna roll me a perception? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so you do find actually uh, a few things. Uh, Yay for stuff. You find probably, eh, let's call it 150 silver. Um, I'll have to go look up the currency again to remember nibs. 100, 100, about 130 nibs, actually, we'll call it. Uh, about 130 nibs worth of various coinage just uh, you know, left on tables as everybody left in a hurry. Um, Sorry. The other thing, the other thing that you find... Uh, is a, a pretty nice uh, silver dagger. Um, uh, well, actually, that's not fair. I, I don't mean to say that it is silver in the D&D sense, to be clear. I mean that it is a regular dagger with a silver uh, pommel and and uh, uh, guard. Um, likewise, the the handle is uh, is wrapped in it's black, but you think that's tarnish uh, is wrapped in a what you guess is a silver chain. Um, it's not uh, it doesn't seem to be magical or anything like that. Um, you know if you does ask have Stella, she'll, she'll confirm uh, it does actually worked into the pommel isn't a house crest but actually is a, a Zentarum symbol. We had some very high falutin from there from the mom. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll pocket it for future reference. Right on. I'll, uh, I'm, I'm keeping track, so I'll add all this stuff to your guys' inventory between sessions. Cool. Thank you, sir. Uh, anything else catch the... Uh, those are the only things really of note. Um, pretty much everything else is like you know, spilled cups. Uh, you might find a couple of like cards that maybe don't belong to any decks of cards you guys have, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but really it's trash as far as like value goes. Okay, dokie. Nobody left any uh, any clothes or attire behind. Um, I'll also take all of the uh, cards that may not actually be ours. Uh, I there's scribes that they, they can learn things. Yep, gotcha. Okay. Uh, Clargus, actually, there probably are like five or six like cloaks. Um, maybe more if you check. Uh, if you check upstairs as well. Um, maybe even a couple that are like, you, you know, you might get, let's call it like a set of fine clothes worth of clothes and, uh, you know, three or four sets of like normal people's clothes worth of clothing items, um, left behind because they absolutely wouldn't have bothered to do things like grab their cloaks and, and pouches and shit like that. So there's probably a few left behind. You're right. I would imagine uh, smoke would take the valuables from those, but the uh, the large articles themselves, we should probably just let people kind of come back and grab because I would imagine some people might actually want their clothes back. That cloak might have cost that dude a bunch of money. Not sure we'd be able to easily tell whose was whose. Eh, it's up for them to sort it out. Is it? Why would we trust them in, in for at all? What? Right. So we just take all this the clothes water and deep. that's that? Well, if they can yeah. identify the clothing without seeing it, there's a fairly yeah. good chance it's sure. theirs. You know? Sure, sure, sure. But um, I absolutely would have ruffled through everything because meow. Right, meow. Meow. Because he's a curious cat. I'm just a pawful. Cavity. <laughs> yeah, we'll add uh, we'll add like another hundred and forty nibs. Nibs is uh, copper, shards is silver. Oh, I mean shards. Then sorry, my bad. Yep, no problem.
Cool. Hmm. So I guess this guy would finally kind of follow me in at some point. Absolutely. Um, and and uh, as he does, he sort of eyeballs the 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 room. Uh, and he says, huh, oh, oh, it looks like it was a nice place. Um, sorry you have to deal with this on your opening night. Well, funny thing is at least the first floor will be nice again tomorrow. Repairs itself. Oh, clever, he says. Clever. He, he sort of resettles his glasses on, a, on the bridge of his nose, and he says, ah, I see, I see, built into the walls and the ruins. That's, that's good magic. Yeah, we inherited quite the place here. <laughs> inherited it, you say? And well, we definitely didn't murder the former residents. But I'm bumping. Yeah, uh, Volo needed us to do something for him, and well, this was uh, this was how he paid us. You see him ever so imperceptibly frowned, and he says, "Oh, you're friends of Volo." Why don't we just tell him your life story while you're at it, huh? <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> stop telling him all these things. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he'll find out in all of this. Anyways, yeah, well, he's, he's an investigator, is. so this is all going to come up. So I mean, and why this is would all you public access too? Confidence. Oh, it's it's, it's easy to give access. him the easy details that anybody can figure out. That's public access. I'm definitely like going to make him Arbor. feel like I'm giving him everything, and then you know, we'll right? To a You're super cooperative. Here, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see. Plus, I do actually no want him and his people to investigate and find this dude. So, you know. <laughs> well, we're gonna find him. Well, someone's gonna find him. We're right. gonna and this things is a will video happen. Game. It, it, <laughs> meow. Yes, precisely. It's a multiplayer evolving presently online world. Presently online world. A meow. In fact, when the place is meow. back up and running, uh, probably tomorrow, unless there's some pending investigation stopping us, uh, you should come by for a drink if you can. He nods and he says, well, I'm, I'm certain we'll come back to follow up uh, on, on the details. Uh, I'm sure you can count on our uh, patronage. Oh, that will be... Much appreciated, and of course, you'll see that we have quite exceptional service here, too. Uh, as, uh, as you're talking, he sort of raises uh, two fingers of his hand, sort of motions uh, the sergeant over, uh, and he says, uh, why don't you detail a couple of the watch to... Um, Give this place a once over. Just make sure that uh, nobody left anything behind that might be useful. Uh, Smoke, he looks over to you and he says, uh, Excuse me, uh, boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi. How you doing? Uh, I have good news for you. Uh, you can have the rest of the night off. There's uh, no more cleaning of this space until we're done. Um, until we're done looking, looking oh, at it. Okay. I'll go read my books then. Thank you, mister. Hopefully you catch the guy. He's not nice. Who fireballs somebody? I guess it was a fireball anyways. It was a big fiery boom yay. Just boom. We were having a really good talks upstairs too. People were talking about really fun stuff. There was a, a priestess of the love temple. She was really nice. In, indeed. Indeed. Uh, he, he looks over at Clark. And he says, quite the interesting staff you have here. Absolutely. Okay, I'm up the stairs, boss. Talk to you later. Uh, so uh, Crowley goes and gets, you know, a couple more uh, watch guys. They, they come in and they start, you know, opening all of your crates, looking at your pantry. Um, eventually, they want to go down into the basement. Uh, I don't know if any of you plan to stop them or not, but if you do, you should probably say so. Oh yeah, I would. Um, I would definitely kind of stop them. It's like, well, this is uh, nobody really got past this point. I checked with our ki kitchen crew. Uh, 
Want to roll persuasion for me? Yeah. That might not go so well with this character. We'll see. Uh, skills, that's right. Perhaps Mudar also goes to assist. Mudar kind of Yeah, he would, well. I would imagine, be around in, in Percept of all of this as well. The kind of giant elephant. It's kind of like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, why don't you roll that one more time? We'll count that as him helping out. Okay. He's like, perhaps I can make you guys a drink up here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> You Swear on my honor, heart. if I'm the emperor. Right, on the emperor. You've had a long night, I'm sure, and you have such a difficult job. I mean, you must be a killer on your backs having to ride those griffins. <laughs> <laughs> why don't I? Why don't I help you take take? You know, why don't I make you a nightcap, if you will? Yep, exactly. Yeah, they they nod and they say, "Oh yeah, you say no, you say nobody went down there," and they they sort of like. Quietly look back at Barnabas, who doesn't seem to notice, and they say, "Thanks, uh, thanks for saving us the time. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's going to be a long night. Sounds like you have a you have a good one. Yeah, certainly." And they they go about the rest of the business, and 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 then they say, "So how do you get a uh, how do you get upstairs?" Ah, uh, yeah, that's from the outside. Uh, Barnabas says, "Oh, uh, which side of the street?" From the north. Interesting. Uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, there were, well, you're ready to keep vaguely points, and he says your boy said that there were um, there were uh, speakers or, or, or something. Is, is, is the upstairs a presentation hall of some sort? It certainly is. It's a forum. In fact, we're always looking for speakers. If there's any specific subject uh, you would like to discuss or bring up or i prefer a more um intimate setting i'm not much of a lecturer but interesting we would like to have a look at that space especially if uh and he, he sort of looks up and he says if it has access to that parapet uh it's possible somebody might have been able to overlook what was there hmm certainly that's a uh, that's a good point It also, of uh, course, leads to our residences, so give me a moment to check with everyone and make sure everybody's decent and what for. Of course, so, of course. Probably take a moment then to uh, let everybody know the situation. Who's was up there, which I would imagine is now smoke and uh, probably Karoma. Yeah. But, I took quickly uh, arranged right. things since put things in places of not the obvious hidey holes because my shinies are my shinies back off. <laughs> yep. Right. Yeah. They're not, they're not like full blown toss in the place or anything. Uh, so you're probably <laughs> safe. They're more like, uh, you know, giving it a once over turning over the papers on top of tables and, and, you know, opening your drawers and things like that. But they're not like, you know, pulling your, your, beds over or, or or you know checking for false floors or anything like that 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 it's not that kind of crime as far as they know doors into the residential like the living quarters are also locked doors aren't they they are okay so then you know when they when they come up i'll show them like yeah the the doors here were locked nobody went through the entire time so uh I don't expect anything's going to be over on that side. It's mostly in the uh, in the big room here, in the den where we set up as the as our forum. Right, uh, Barnabas will uh, like he nods as, as you point all this stuff out, uh, and he says you have quite a few um, uh, children on your your staff. Uh, is that normal here? Oh, I've... so <laughs> they're the not one... part of our criminal network. The the one <laughs> it's that not exploited you, uh... child labor, I swear. The one who you saw. Are you just gonna explain is... that we have a magic too, a uh, magic dragon too no. that casts magic spells on everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't? Yeah. No, also, I... we have a talking robot, and yep, it's cool. Yeah, no, no, our dragon will help you. Wait, 
I'm investigating 11 charred corpses, and you're only now telling me you have a dragon? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would tell him, oh, well, you know, we've, we've known him for quite a while. He's, he's more than just some boy. He's actually one of our, uh, uh, one of the part owners of the place. I may look like this, but I'm actually 24. It's complicated. Oh, of course. You mentioned oh, no. you were Volo's um, friend. Here. Yeah. Oh, hey. he's he tells great stories, and everything can be explained by Volo. Can't it? Because, well, Volo's Volo. Oh, wait. I thought you are upstairs. You're not having a They're upstairs now. Yeah, they're upstairs. Oh, when did they come in? Oh, uh, they haven't entered the living area. They're only in the common area. I see. Yeah. The, yeah, no. The, I'm the, hiding. I'm still hiding away. I'm not in the common area. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah, up yeah. in the living area somewhere for sure. I've I've definitely told you, you know, they're likely not coming in the living area, but they're going to be searching the forum right now. Though, I mean, in, in your case, Kuroa, couldn't you just, like, grab a shield and a sword and then stand very stiffly at a corner? That's actually exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? That's what I'm doing. I'm listening in the whole conversation. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I mean, I figure you had your robot kind of following along stealthily, so. I mean, yeah, it's still sort of it's it's hidden itself away in uh on um Smoke's body somewhere because it hasn't actually left Smoke's body. Right. Yeah, hanging out in the folds of his of his. You know, his his clothes or something. Yeah. Or the tufts of his fur. Right, totally. Uh, yeah, so show him around. Um, you know, I, I assume you even show him all the various cloaks and, and, and stuff that people left behind. Um, yeah. They are, uh, you know, they poke around at them, but they're uh, they're pretty clearly not all that interested at the moment. Uh Barnabas has basically just been following and listening and nodding and dropping the occasional comment here and there. Um, but uh, mostly he's been kind of like staring at you the whole time, Clargus, like, you know, watching your face and, 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 and uh, you know, like uh, staring intently into your eyes as you talk. Um, not that you can see his eyes behind the glare of the, the you know, the, the candle flame on the, on his glasses, but, but you could tell he's sort of like, like, uh, way more interested in how you respond and react than to what they're actually looking at in the house. So then I'll probably ask him uh, pretty squarely, so what are the odds you're actually going to find this criminal? He, uh, he sort of nods and he says, well, that depends on what we find, I suppose. Um, there's some interesting tales being told by the eyewitnesses. I, uh, I'm not necessarily convinced of a monster, for example, but it's pretty clear that somebody wanted that poor fool down there dead. Usually there's a way to find out who would have wanted it done, so that's probably where we'll start. Uh, and as he says this, you know, Crowley trailing behind you, he, he says, oh yeah, you, you trust in the watch. We, we'll, we'll get him. Certainly, and... Uh... Of course, keep us abreast of the situation. Um, should it come down to us getting our own hands dirty to catch this devious criminal, um, well. He ruined grand opening and hurt people. Me no like him. You want him not be happy. Yeah, Barnabas uh, adjusts his glasses again. Uh, and he says, hmm. Well, I'll caution you again. Um, as I'm certain I'm not the first member of the city to tell <coughs> Samaritans like you this. Uh, it is a crime to interfere with an investigation of the watch. Uh, it is also a crime to interfere in the pursuit of justice uh, from the officials here, uh, both in the watch and, and, and in my own watchful order. Uh, as much as you might want to get involved, please, citizen, uh, let us do our jobs. Oh, certainly. I suppose then, if you do give up the pursuit, let us know when you have. 
Uh, Not that he, we're planning on doing anything. <laughs> right. He he says, well, uh, it's not necessarily the policy of the watch to uh, to update people on the status of our investigations. But uh, if you were to come by a watch station and ask, you know my name. That's fair. Certainly you can appreciate that we have concern for um, repeat attacks of the sort and wanting to do everything we can to prevent them. After all, Quiet. there's now competition in the neighborhood. A uh, small fellow came by and let us know that he, too, is opening a tavern in the neighborhood and didn't wish oh. us luck. Yes. Um, uh, a rival, ta- you're saying? Table Talk. What was his name? <laughs> a, a rival, and it would sure be a shame if his tavern happened to explode later. <laughs> oh, that's and funny. Hold I on, let me see if I can find him. God, dude. Oh, weird. He's not in my notes. What were you planning to blow his shit up? Oh, uh, no. He, yeah, I, I don't recommend that unless, like, you guys really want to push that. This is probably not a good time since you just told the cops he exists. Uh, fuck. I'll have to get his name out of the actual book. Uh, it's I don't have a link handy, so it's going to be a pain in my ass, but I'll get you the name. John later. Doe for now. Yeah. Yeah. Fucko. Yeah. Fucko came by and uh, didn't really have very kind words for us in our opening here, so... Uh, probably worth checking with him as well. Indeed, he says. I suppose we'll talk to everybody in the neighborhood tonight. Sounds like it'll be a long one. I don't see myself going to sleep anytime soon. If you guys need uh, need a drink or something to eat, I can probably fire up the kitchen. Oh, didn't we get some of the um, the coffee stuff? We could make up a fresh pot. Uh, yeah. Cor- Carly kind of looks up, hopefully, at that. Uh, but Barnabas sort of waves his hand dismissively, and he says, "He says, no, no, we'll just uh, we'll stick to the work. Thank, thank you very much. Just trying to do all we can to aid the watch, because you guys are great. You keep this place ordered. Indeed, he says, uh, as he walks towards the exit, and he says, I think we've seen enough. Let's go, everybody. Oh, my God. <laughs> They're so suspicious of us. They're so suspicious of us. Uh, yeah, and with that, I think we will call it a session, guys. Uh, thanks for playing tonight. Yeah. Sounds good. Quite a lot happened. Yeah, definitely. They're incredibly suspicious of us. <laughs> <laughs> that was the least subtlety. We I, just possibly. I can't possibly see why. <laughs> I wonder why. It's not like we were like, oh, don't look downstairs. Also, we're going to volunteer a bunch of information to you for some reason. And, uh, man. I'm. <laughs> also, tell us if you're done investigating. Just. I know you guys don't like uh, other if people. If you happen to have not found any suspects, it'd be great if you let us know. Just let us know. <laughs> That'd be great if we got away with it. I mean, not that we got away with it. <laughs> we didn't commit the crime. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> they have to be the densest motherfuckers to not be suspicious of us. Oh, what? What? what's the children? Oh, he's not a child. He's 24. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's an owner of the bar. We've been friends with him for a long time. Uh, okay. Actually, we don't really know this famous if I'm guy. Not, if I'm not mistaken, we actually have, like, I'm registered in with the guilds at a specific uh, age. Oh, right. no, you, you absolutely are. You're also, uh, you guys signed paperwork to actually own the tavern uh, fairly recently in the timeline. Uh, so, like, there are fresh records of you absolutely inheriting the place from Volo. Like, it's not that that stuff won't check out. It's just that it sounds fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it's just everything we said sounds suspicious as shit. It, but, but again, you can write it all off as Volo. Because I mean, Volo. can you go? Know? <laughs> this That's... guy clearly knows who Volo is. Incringed. Yeah. Visibly. Sure convenient. If there was a single get out of jail free card. And it happened oh, yeah. to Volo. I, 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 I don't think you can count Ido Volo as a pass or anything, but uh, 
if everything else added up, there is a point where you'd go, well, fuck, that's probably what happened. It's kind of weird, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's no weirder than any of the stories you read about in Volo's books. <laughs> oh, that well, guy's so visibly cringe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got the uh, like the, the impression there is that that guy has obviously had to deal with Volo before at his time. Oh, wait, Volo was here. He needs to interview Volo. Ah, I need to go over and tell him this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because Volo the... was... What were you going to say? Because I want to see how that interaction goes down. It'll be amazing. <laughs> His name, the investigator's name is Barnabas? Yeah, Barnabas uh, Blastwind. <laughs> Don't stand behind him. <laughs> no uh, lighted torches anywhere near his bum. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Barnabas. Also, Barnabas. Can I offer you in some jewels? I just think a man of your know, reputation. I don't know. You seem like you could use a win. How about some. Uh, I've some recently gold? fallen into a fortune. Perhaps you'd like a share? Right. No real reason. Just f amongst friends, you know? Because <laughs> we're, we're so damn supportive of the watch. Yeah, you guys are doing a good job, and we're not at all doing anything suspicious. Hey, I, all I offered was coffee. That's, that's not suspicious. The, everything we said, that whole encounter was suspicious. Yeah, that's funny. The funny thing is, though, is that like you, you didn't actually lie. The one lie you told is probably the only one they're not bothering to check once they've referenced everything else. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Which was uh, which one? The uh, that, the explosion that you, you guys. Made. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll have to look up the legal code again, but I'm fairly certain that at a bare minimum, that's a. Uh, interference with justice, which is a fairly hefty fine and potentially hard labor in Waterdeep. What? If they can prove it. Oh, you mean lying about it. Yeah. Blowing up a door, well, lying about it too, but blowing up a door in pursuit of a suspect when you are not a member of the Watch or a duly, uh, what's the word? A duly something agent, uh, duly warranted agent. Um, you don't have the right to go chase a criminal. Yep, that sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, to be clear, I'm absolutely going to investigate the guy. Like, the game isn't we sit around and let NPCs play the game for us. Right. Well, and while and we, while we this isn't a post a twenty game where you're a ruler telling your minions to go do things for you. Right? Exactly. Right. right. Uh, I was going to say, also, it's pretty clear that Barnabas is not going to keep you in the loop, so of course he's not, probably not going to pan out in any useful way for you, you know what I mean? Right. Like, we have, we have the ability to track him down because we have a, a physical material from the guy, or a person, or thing. Right? And we have access to mages not to mention, I have the ability to fabricate the right tool for the job. <laughs> Literally. Um, so like well, we have... yeah, and you're not, uh, you're not explicitly on any kind of ticking clock as far as you know, so you even have the time to use like your long-term efforts and skills here if you like as part of this investigation. Right. Right. Um, My gut tells me that this is not a long-term thing. This is s sooner the better. For sure. Yeah, in like uh in in like uh crime drama terms, it's pretty sure that stuff is in play. Yeah. Right. And we if, um, with what all we're already privy to about what's going on in the world. Uh yeah. Well, it has to wait at least the night cuz most of you need to sleep. Um Is there is there a mechanical detriment to uh to uh There totally is, yeah. You gain levels of exhaustion when you don't rest. Uh yeah. Yeah. and that gives you things like disadvantage on saves and, and other stuff. Like it, it exhaustion's bad and can actually ultimately kill you. Yeah, I think it's exhaustion five is death. Yeah. 
Uh, no, is that and that what it compounds every night you've not rested or yeah. something? Or yeah. other things like uh, I would imagine some sort of undead creature might touch you and it might give you an exhaustion or. After mm. the haste spell has expired, you gain a level of exhaustion automatically. Right, I think there's a poison that does it too. Like, there are a couple of different ways, but yeah. Mm. This was fun, though. It started with a bang. And, uh... And, and it was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Watts, did you like how I, uh, used my magic to help you? <laughs> fast as fast can be. You'll never catch me. It makes me want to get long strider boots. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Hey, that would and that would double stamina my bracelet. Ability. Yeah. That thing was cool, fast cool. though. All right. Well, I am gonna call it a night, guys.